myself. You ever kind of eavesdrop on a conversation and you heard folk talking, mm, you see what they got? Mm, you see them shoes that you know those shoes don't match. Oh, I forgot we in church. We did church, so we don't do that. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot we don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I can't really. Mm, you see, you see, you see that? sit there and we'll critique and we'll judge and at the same time, really truthfully, don't hold no weight, don't matter, a hill of being, and guess what? Won't help the situation one way or the other. They don't want it, so guess what? It don't matter no more. There ain't nothing you gonna do to what? To change it. But at the same time, not just with dress and not just with our appearance, how many of you know that we can even judge each other as it relates to our lifestyle? And we'll look at other folk, mm, girl, did you hear what she did? Man, you heard what that dude did? But at the same time, how many of you know that many a time we might point that finger, but we got our own stuff going on in our own little world, in our own little area that we have looked over. And at the same time, we sit around judging other folk. Well, look what it says. It says, for we shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, that's for Christians. Okay, let me help you out. That's for Christians. The Christians will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you have to stand before God, and you, he's going to read out the account of your life. You don't want to be in front of the great white, white throne, because I'm here to tell you that's for sinners. And that's for those who've rejected Christ. And that's for those that, guess what, when they die, they never ever receive Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. But when we look at the judgment seat of Christ, that's for Christians. Well, preacher, what are you trying to say? If we spend too much time looking around at others, we'll overlook the issues within ourselves. Well, that didn't work. It's kind of like the toilet talking about the trash can. Oh, yeah, you got all this in you. And look, they threw that nasty stuff in you. And this, that, and the other. And all the other. And could you imagine the toilet in the, in the trash can having a conversation? And the toilet talking about the trash can like he ain't nothing. He ain't nobody. And you this and you that. Ooh, we, ooh, I, and this, that, and the other. And all the trash can might tell him, yeah, but guess what? You better wait what's coming for you. Somebody open up the bathroom door. Here it is. <laughs> now, how in the world we as church folk and we as individuals, dirt, the Lord say, going to talk about other dirt. One piece of dirt ain't no better than no other piece of dirt. So at the same time, we can't, you know, one just, you know, got a little bit more perfume on, that's all. One just got, you know, a better bank account, that's all. But at the same time, we just dressed up dirty. And when we look at one another, we've got to make sure that we're not looking at each other in the eyes of condemnation, but we're looking at each other in the eyes of love. Because I'm here to tell you, it's love that conquers all. So when we look at ourselves and we look at others, we should never be in the business to where we're comparing ourselves one with the other because we'll run the risk of overlooking all the stuff that we got going on in our own little world. Because why? Because it fascinates us to really make ourselves feel better than other folk that we feel are not on our level. Yo, children, what y'all know to say? Get on my level? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not on my level. But at the same time, how many of you know that as Christians, as believers, as God's creation, guess what? Nobody is no better than nobody else. And when we look at folk, I don't care if you see the drunk on the street, you ain't no better than them. I don't care if you see the crackhead on the corner, you ain't no better than them. Why? Because you've got to understand that we are all God's creation and we should never ever get to the point to where we judge folk to where, guess what, we, we, we feel like we got a, what, a heaven to send them to or a hell to send them to. Guess what? We are not the final judge. Tap the head and say, yeah, uh, you got to stand before God for yourself. <laughs> God is the what? The final judge. Well, Moving right along, verse 11, 
says, For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess God. Now, here's what amazes me about that text. It says, Every. Wait a minute. It says, Every. You know what that lets me know? That even those who left God's green earth, saying that there was no God, and saying that they didn't need the Lord in their life, they gonna one day lift up their eyes and confess that God is who He is. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Well, preacher, what are you saying? You gotta understand that we got to always remember that there's a day where the Lord will come down and He's going to lay down His judgment on people. And we must always remember that guess what? We got to make sure that we never ever get to the business to doing what God's job is and that's judging for. Why? Because every tub got to sit on his own body. When you stand before the Lord, guess what? My brother sitting right there. If I open up my mouth to talk about him, the Lord going to say, wait a minute, bro. This ain't about him. I'm talking to you about you. <laughs> and we got to know and understand that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that God is who he is. No matter where you come from. Because why? No matter who you are and whether you think you have to or not. Eventually, you will have no choice but to acknowledge the sovereignty and the total authority of God. No matter where you come from, no matter who you are, because I'm here to tell you, there's folk in our world today who believe that they made it on their own merits and that they didn't need no help to get where they are. But I'm here to tell you that there's going to be a day where they're going to lift up their eyes and guess what? There's going to be some gnashing of teeth. And there's going to be some tears in their eyes because folk tried to tell them about this God that they said did not exist. And the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I want you to know that there's going to be a day that we got to look forward to that we're going to have to stand before God and He's going to judge us. Now watch, check it out. There was this story that I heard of this guy over in Florida. And I guess you would call him a smooth criminal. I guess, I don't know. He, for 56 years, avoided the authorities. He killed a man when he was 21 years old. And he fled to Florida and thought he had gotten away. He was 76 years old when they caught him. And he thought in his own feeble mind that, oh well, I'm an old man. I got away with it. Well, they reopened the case. And let me tell you, they dealt with it. Well, preacher, what that got to do with anything? Whatever you do in the dark, it will come to light. Whatever it is you think you got away with, guess what? It will reveal itself. So we've got to understand that there's an ultimate judgment that guess what? We can't run away from. Now watch me now. You know what we'll do? We'll, we'll. God showed me this and I was like, wow. How many of you know that, 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 that happiness can be fake? I can make you feel and make you think that I'm the happiest person in the world. And on the inside, ain't nothing but a storm going on. Well, preacher, what in the world that got to do with anything? Because you got folk running around like they got it going on, like they happy with everything and they this and they that. But at the same time, know within themselves that guess what? That they ain't living right, they ain't doing right, they ain't doing the right stuff. And guess what? If somebody found out what they were doing, then guess what? They wouldn't put them in jail, they put them under the jail. But every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess. Well, preacher, what do you mean? That's a 
for sure thing, people. And it will happen. Well, moving right along. Verse number 12. So that each of us shall give account of himself to God. So each of us shall give an account of himself to God. So each of us shall give an account of himself. So each of us, how many of you know that the Lord don't provide no good grace? You're going to have to go all by yourself. So each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Preacher, where are you going with this? We can lie and justify with each other. And even with ourselves. But God will reveal that guess what? That you have to stand before him and he's going to give the true record. How many of you know that we can try to manipulate, try to lie, try to justify what we do amongst one another? And even build camaraderie with other folk to make them think that we right. And even convince them to the point that guess what? They feel as though we right. But how many of you know when we stand before God, guess what? You can try to lie and justify all day long. You know what he's going to do? He's going to listen to you for a little while. He's going to say, mm, excuse me, excuse me. Um, do you realize I'm God? So, tell me why you're trying to lie to me. If I am truth, I know all truth, I created truth, how are you going to stand in front of me and say the things that you are saying? God will look at us and say, no, 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 sister, girl, brother, man, let me stop you. Because guess what? The way you operate it down there, it ain't going to work up here. See, we can lie and justify with each other. But guess what? And even what I said, how many of you know we can even make ourselves believe our own lie? I remember this song that they sang. Many of you know it. The younger kids probably can appreciate it. Um, there's a song called I'm the Man. Anybody? Anybody know that song? I'm the Man. Yeah, somebody sung it back there. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I heard you. I heard you. Yeah. See? They know in the lyrics, here's what he said. He said, I believe every lie that I ever told. <laughs> he actually said that in his lyrics. He believed every lie that he ever What's his name? Aloe Black? That's his name? Yes. Yeah, don't, don't get quiet now. <laughs> Just sing it now. You're... <laughs> Name it Aloe Black. And he said, I believe every lie that I ever told. But how many of you know that I don't care how many lies you have told yourself. And I don't care if you even believe them lies that you told. When you stand before God, God will shut you up. And he's going to say, you know what? That might have worked somewhere else. But guess what? I am the final judge. And guess what? Anything you think nobody knows... <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we got to understand that guess what? We all have to give an account for ourselves. That ought to change the way we do stuff. Jesus. Mm, I knew there was no shot in message when I started. So guess what? I, I'm, I'm over that. But watch me. How many of you know that if we knew we had to give an account to God for what we do in this body, how many of you know that that ought to change what we do. That ought to change our lifestyle. Watch me now. Where you going with this preacher? If I know all I do is lie, and I know I got to give an account to God one day, I might just stop lying. If I, if I know I'm creeping and sleeping, and I ain't supposed to be, and I'm with somebody that ain't mine. And, I'm, and I know I got to give an account to God. I might stop creeping and sleeping. Who <laughs> yeah. was quiet? Oh, I, I got to say, it's so quiet in here. You can hear them roaches tap dancing outside. <laughs> 
can't look at me. Ain't not God. What y'all say, children, don't judge me. Don't judge me. I ain't got to judge you. God won't do that. But just remember now, I can't judge you like he going to judge you. Because when he deal with you, Lord, have mercy. He going to deal with you. So we got to always remember that when we realize that we have to give an account to God, it would really shape and frame our minds in a totally different way. Because if I know I'm about to do wrong, and I know the Lord will hold me accountable for what I'm about to do, I may end up doing it, but it'll be hard. Because I'm going to think twice about it before I do it. I'm going to throw this in there. If you never ever get convicted about something that you're not, that, that you're doing wrong, according to the word of God, if you never ever get convicted and you never ever struggle with doing it or not doing it, and it's just easy for you to do, I question your salvation. Because you can't just do anything and the Holy Spirit don't get all up in your grief. Because why? God gave us the Holy Spirit to hold us accountable and to be there to, guess what, guide us and teach us as we walk, breathe, and live in this life. But each one of us have to give an account. Well, how can I, how can I share this with us? Um, many you know that I am a school teacher, and uh, twice a year now, twice a year now, it's connected it's connected to us receiving extra money, if you want to call it that. And we get evaluated twice a year. And what ends up happening is, the boss or principal, they come in your class. And when they come in your class, they have this form that they have to fill out. Now, here's the thing. When they look at that form, and when they start to write them, at the top of the form, it might say the evaluator. And then it might say the name of the evaluatee. Now here's the thing. It say name, up, not name, sir. You know what that lets me know? When they're going to write down what they have to write down, it won't be about Miss Sally across the hall. They write themselves down about me. And when I go in after the evaluation is over, and we go to talking, I can't talk about little Sally down the hall. I got to talk about what I've done or not done in my own class. When we give an account, it says each. And when we stand before the Lord, it's going to be each one of us. And I'm here to tell you, that's going to be one of them lines where ain't nobody going to want to cut. You know how the children get in line and they kind of push each other out of the way. I was before you. I was before you. You know what it's going to be like that day? You can go ahead. You go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You good, man? Go ahead, man. You good. The Lord is going to really have to step in because that's going to be happening all day long. Lord, y'all better get in line before I get you. <laughs> Why? Because we got to understand that when we have to give an account, we don't like it. Let's be real. Nobody likes to be told that they're doing something wrong or that they're not doing something that they're supposed to do. Nobody. You know why? In our minds, we've conjured up that guess what? I'm all right and nobody should be able to tell me nothing. And when we stand before God, I mean to tell you, you better throw that attitude out the window. Because God going to say, yeah, 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 I'm not, I'm not this one, that one, or the other one. Guess what? This is your final destination. Wow. And each one has to give what? An account for the deeds done in the body. Well, preacher, you shared some things with me. And I'm going to just give you a recap of what I shared. The first thing, verse number 10, if we spend too much time looking
looking around at others, we'll overlook the issues within ourselves. That's the first thing I want us to see. The second thing I want us to see, verse 11, no matter who you are, or whether you think you will have to or not, eventually, you will have no choice but to acknowledge the sovereignty and the total authority of God. Verse number 12, the last thing. We can lie and we can justify with each other and even ourselves. But God will reveal that, guess what? He has the true record of what it is that we've done. And people of God, when we look at it, we've got to understand and we've got to know that if we be more focused on our own walk, I'm here to tell you, things will be so much better. Because, you know what I learned along the way? I can't control what Sister Lois is going to do. She's going to do whatever she's going to do. I can't control what my wife going to do. She's going to do whatever she's going to do. And even as a parent, how many of you know, you have limited control over what they're going to do. Because they get to a point to where they're going to do what they're going to do. And whatever consequences come, get what? Oh, well. So get what? We got to be more focused on what we're doing in the midst of the situation. Because why? We can't control other folk. And we got to always remember that God is watching. God is looking. God knows all. He sees all. He's there when you think he's not there. He's in the midst of your situation. He's in the midst of your home. He's at your job. He wouldn't be driving in that car and cussing folk out because they'd have cut you off. He's everywhere at the same time. He at school when you done hit somebody upside the head and you don't think the principal saw you do it. Yeah. He's around the corner when you taking a swig and you think nobody can see you. He's everywhere at the same time and we have to give an account to God. Well, preacher, that's kind of hard. Well, let me share something. There is hope. There's something called grace. And I thank God for grace. Because grace says that God will give you what you, guess what? What you don't even deserve. How many of you know right now without a shadow of a doubt God is blessing you and you look at your life and you know you ain't mean enough to part. But only but by the grace of God He's keeping you. He's sustaining you. And He's keeping you where you need to be. Why? Because He's a gracious God. But I don't want to send the wrong message because guess what? Even though he's a gracious God, sin has consequences. But at the same time, I thank God because guess what? When he felt you didn't have enough and you turned to him sincerely, he let up off you and said, my grace is sufficient for thee. And I thank God for his amazing grace. Well, what is his amazing grace? How many of you know that in Romans 5 and 8, it says that God demonstrated his love. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah, while you was cutting up, while you was acting a fool, while you was drinking that must I clown, while you was out and about midnight rambling and running this one and running that one and bragging about all that you have done, he died for your sins. Not when 
Yes, sir. 